I was skateboarding around saying who's got my money. I was skateboarding around knocking on every single person's door looking for some of these in exchange for some work so that I could save up and buy a camera. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today I want to talk about both silver and cash. How cash can be used as a tool for the short term and silver can be used as a tool for the long term. But really quick, just in case you're new, make sure to subscribe for daily videos. Also subscribe to my second channel, which is my backup channel for exclusive weekly content. Brand new video over there, go check it out. The link will be in the description, I'm trying to hit 2,000 subscribers. And if you wanna help support the channel by getting some DYDSS merchandise, of course we have some precious metal themed t-shirts and hoodies which are up for grabs, along with a ton of other products, t-shirts, hoodies, even stickers, many of which are raising funds and awareness for different charity organizations. And of course the brand new Kraken Stackin' t-shirt, hoodie, sticker, and coffee mug inspired by the beautiful two ounce silver Kraken coin. Any and all merchandise can be found by clicking the first link in the description section down below. Thank you in advance, it's more than appreciated. But today I wanna to talk about silver and how I believe it's absolutely vital and it could be used as a tool, a long-term solution to long-term problems. And I'll get into that, but before we talk about the money, we have to talk about a little bit of currency. You just have to do it. You can't have money without currency. I mean, you can, but not with this video. So I want to talk about cash first and foremost because I believe cash is a short-term solution to a short-term problem. As I just said, silver is a long-term solution to a long-term problem. But cash, it can be absolutely vital. And this video was also partially in response to or inspired by some of the comments that I get from time to time saying that cash is trash or they hate the dollar bill and it's absolutely pointless and they hate it and it's blah, 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 blah. The way I see it is if, if that's your mentality, then maybe you should quit your job. Why are you spending 40, 50, 60 hours a week collecting dollar bills if you hate them so much? But I understand that the dollar bill is a very useful tool and without the dollar bill, we would have incredible incredible amounts of difficulty getting our hands on real, true, honest money. But short-term solutions to short-term problems, this could mean a variety of things. This could mean the upcoming bills, the, the amount of cash that you have to pay, you know, next month's rent or, or mortgage payments or really any bill at all, the, the phone bill, car insurance, anything. Short-term solutions to short-term problems. If you do not have the cash, you may or may not have a roof over your head. If you do not have the cash, you might not be able to eat dinner tonight. If you do not have the cash, all sorts of problems can just pop up into your life. And that's a more mild example, just by paying the bills. I mean, it's, it's the same reason we go to work every day so we can get some of these, so we can give some of these away in exchange for things that we absolutely need. But more extreme examples could be, let's just say you get into a car accident. You know, it's not really something you plan on ha occurring. It's not really something that you hope happens and God forbid it never happens. But unfortunately, life is life and things happen sometimes. And what happens with a car accident? Oftentimes, you know, you're gonna have to pay for car repairs. If you get injured, you might have to pay medical bills or both could happen simultaneously or it could be even worse than that it could just be more than just an injury it could be you know surgery that you have to go through it might not be a car repair maybe you have to buy a whole new car now will insurance help you out will car insurance help take care of whatever car issues you're going through will health insurance take care of whatever hospital issues you're going through yeah it could absolutely help but the dollar bill at the end of the day this is going to finish the job that your insurance started so odds are the insurance isn't going to take care of absolutely everything so you're probably going to need a little bit of currency to help finish the job and the same goes for a house fire a quick example you know if the whole house burns down imagine going to work and 10 hours later you're on the drive home you get a phone call saying there's fire trucks outside and your whole house is practically burned down you lost everything inside you lost all the food you lost all the furniture you lost all of the memories you lost the house so you know it's, it's a big problem and you know sure there's going to be insurance that can, you know, help replace a lot of things, but some things are irreplaceable and it's obviously not going to take care of absolutely everything. And the dollar bill can really help you in a situation like that. And the last example I will give for the dollar bill and how it could be a short term solution to a short term problem is it's a funny little example. Imagine the 10 year old kid in the neighborhood. He lives down the street and every couple of weeks or every month or so he circles around the neighborhood, knocking on every single person's door. Hey, can I shovel the snow? Can I rake the leaves? Can I cut the grass? 
Can I wash the car? Can I walk the dog? Can I do this? Can I do that? He's not looking for cash. He's looking for work. He's very persistent. He's very determined. And he's looking for work, not for you to hand him a couple of bucks. Well, guess what? That 10-year-old kid was me. That was me walking around the neighborhood. I was skateboarding around saying, who's got my money? I was skateboarding around, knocking on every single person's door, looking for some of these in exchange for some work so that I could save up and buy a camera. And how many neighbors told me no time after time after time after time? Almost all of them. How many told me yes? Enough to buy me a camera. And guess what that was? A short-term solution to a short-term problem. What was my problem? I needed a camera. What was standing in my way? Not having the cash. So I worked, I saved, I solved the problem by getting enough cash to exchange for a camera, and then I solved the problem by going to the store and buying it. But it wasn't just a short-term solution to a short-term problem for me. It was also a short-term solution to a short-term problem for a lot of the neighbors. Maybe they you know, didn't have the ability to or didn't have the time or just didn't have the motivation to shovel their driveway or, or bag up all the leaves or, or do whatever needed to be done. Maybe they didn't want to. Or maybe they just got a little bit of satisfaction of just you know helping a kid out. You're like, all right, yeah, I'll, I'll put him to work. He's over here asking for work, so I'll give him something to do, give him a couple of bucks. It was also a short-term solution for another neighbor, a neighbor who told me no. Every single time I knocked on his door, he told me no, 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 no. I still kept you know showing up. And at one point, he told me, kid, you got to stop knocking on my door. You're here every couple of weeks asking different questions. I keep turning you down and you keep showing back up. Can I give you $10 just to never knock on my door again? I told him, heck yeah, if you make it $15, I'll bring you back a no soliciting sign. That way nobody else knocks on your door. I was a hustler, man. I was determined and not much has changed. When you're smiling, when you're smiling. But that was a short-term solution to a short-term problem for him. What was his problem? The 10-year-old kid knocking on the door every couple of weeks. And the solution was giving a little bit of cash to just go away. Didn't really take the cash to make me go away. If he said, hey, can you please just knock on my door anymore? I, I, I don't want to keep you know seeing you. I would have respectfully never knocked on his door again. But at the time, I saw it as you know free cash, I guess. But now that I'm older, I realized that he was doing a temporary solution to a temporary problem. The problem was like, me <laughs> and the solution was just making me go away but now enough about the currency enough about the cash it doesn't deserve to be in frame for more than a couple of seconds at a time i want to talk about the money let's talk about the actual money now the real true honest money the silver also the gold but for the sake of today's video let's talk about the silver like i said before it's a long-term solution to a long-term problem and what is that long-term problem it would be inflation. Everybody loves inflation. Inflation, the dollar bill taking a beating, taking some punishment, getting weaker and weaker and weaker. And oftentimes when currency gets weaker, real true money gets stronger. The silver, the gold becomes stronger. It also is becoming more in demand. I mean, just look at the premiums right now. Silver is a long-term solution to a long-term problem because silver, the way I see it, I don't consider to be an investment. I do not see it as an investment. I never have and I never will because I, I know what an actual investment is. But I see it more as a physical savings account. I consider it just a way of saving money for the long-term, preserving my wealth for years and years and years, decades and decades and decades to come. I see it as just a way of saving my money and it acts as a tool as a hedge against inflation because obviously as time goes on and with the way the economy is going right now and with, with all of this financial uncertainty and economic hardships going on right now it, it, it's a very scary time especially for the dollar bill and the way i see it is you know with all of this printing that they're doing and with I would imagine much, much, much more printing they will be doing in upcoming weeks or months, especially if and when a second stimulus gets issued. I, I've been told that it was 
going to happen, and then it got delayed, then I was told it was gonna happen again, then there was another delay, and then, then that all happened again, and then they had their you know big important meeting the other day where absolutely nothing got done, and now all those politicians are in recess until September 8th or something like that. So they're on vacation, and we're sitting here still wondering what in the world's going on. You know how it works. But with all the mass printing that has been going on, with all the mass printing that will continue to go on, the dollar bill has slowly but surely been losing purchasing power. I mean, look at how much a $20 bill could have got you at a grocery store 20, 30, 40 years ago. How much can a $20 bill get you at a grocery store today? Two or three loaves of bread and maybe two or three gallons of milk. And that might even be stretching it. That might even be, you know, more than what a $20 bill can actually get you. Point being is that the dollar bill, it's lost so much purchasing power over the years that it's just become so weak. It's old, it's fragile, it's brittle. It seems to be standing on its last leg. It seems to be pretty much in the ambulance on the way to the hospital. The dollar bill is practically on a ventilator right now. The dollar bill, it's really not looking good for the dollar bill. Even in the short term, it's not looking good for the dollar bill. I'm, I'm terrified what's gonna happen to the dollar bill just this year alone, let alone 5, 10, 15, 20 years down the road where it's just going to get weaker and weaker and weaker. Is it going to dwindle away? Is it going to dissipate? Is it going to, you know, fall on its face? Is it going to slowly be, you know, removed? Is it going to quickly crumble? I, I don't know what's going to happen with all of this uncertainty and with all of this mass printing and with all of these bailouts and with all of these stimulus packages and with all of these 40 million unemployment claims and with all of the issues going on it's you know believe me when i say it i don't think it's gonna be too good for the dollar bill it's taking some serious punishment right now this might eventually finish the dollar bill off and the way i see it is the silver and the gold it, it was it's pretty much designed to preserve your wealth for the long term and act as a hedge against inflation and i think that's exactly what's going to occur. I think that's exactly what silver and gold is going to do for those of us who are stacking it for the long term. I don't think it's going to do much for you for the short term. I mean, yes, of course, it can help you if you absolutely need to liquidate. Like I said, cash is a short-term solution to a short-term problem. And if you have the silver and the gold and you also have a short-term problem and you absolutely need to liquidate some of the silver for a little bit of cash so you can take care of that short-term problem, that's a different story. But I don't think silver and gold is going to do all that much for you for the short term. If you're looking at it from an investor's point of view, I think that that's probably a bad way of seeing it. I don't agree with that perspective. I do not agree with that mentality. That would be what I like to refer to as fiat mentality. People say, oh, it went up in value, therefore it's worth more. Let me sell more and cash out and profit. I don't really see that as a profit because if the value of silver goes up, that probably means that the value of the dollar went down. So it seems a little bit counterproductive, especially in the short term. Point being, is that silver and gold, as far as I'm concerned, it's it's going to take care of me. I'm going to try my best to spend the next couple of decades taking care of my silver and my gold. So later on down the road, the silver and the gold will be able to take care of me. That's the way I see it. That's the way I view it. I'm not a financial advisor. Nothing on this channel is financial advice. It's all for entertainment purposes only, but it's also to help initiate a conversation. So I'm hoping everything or, or even something that I shared in today's video can spark somewhat of a discussion in the comment section. So number one, let me know, what are your thoughts? And two, I believe the silver and the gold is gonna be going up in value. I do believe that. Like I said before, that typically means that the value of the dollar bill is gonna be going down simultaneously. So when one goes up, the other one goes down. It's not like the dollar bill and silver are both gonna be going up. I mean, the dollar bill, for example, let me take this 50 right here. This $50 bill, this $50 glorified IOU note, this fiat currency piece of paper. I mean, as I said the other day, I mean, the primary use for paper is to, you know, write on or draw on or something like that. And it's kind of hard to do now that it's already been, you know, drawn on and written on as it is. So it's, all, it's, it's almost as if like you took away you know, it's use anyway. If I needed to, you know, take notes on something like that, I can't do it because this one has notes all over it as it is. But a $50 bill, I mean, just, you know, according to face value, it's worth $50. But how much can it really get you? Not nearly as much as it could 
back in the day. Not nearly as much as it should be able to get you. I mean, like I said, I mean, this is a man-made invention. This is a glorified IOU. And it's becoming weaker and weaker because they're printing more and more and more of them. And sure, that might be a short-term solution, but in the long term, I view that as absolutely detrimental. And, and, and I don't think that's a very good sign, and especially right now. I mean, if you just take a look at the general state of the economy, if you look at, the, if you look at all of the markets, I mean, there are you know, red flags being waved right now. There, there's a lot of you know, warning signs and... It's not really looking all that good, but truth be told, as I said, in my opinion and from my perspective, not a financial advisor, but I consider the silver and gold to be the long-term solution to the long-term problem. Is the long-term problem here just yet? No, it's years and years. It's decades and decades away, but eventually it's going to be a problem. It's not a problem just yet. I guess you could argue that it is a problem, but the magnitude of the problem is not here just yet. It's gonna get a whole lot worse and for the people who are unprepared or the people who are refusing to prepare for what could potentially happen or, or I guess arguably what is absolutely going to happen 100% certainty, they're not preparing themselves. They are not saving money for the long term. I mean, come on, man. They're not even saving currency, let alone real true money. Real, true, honest money. Internationally recognized as money. Constitutionally recognized as money biblically recognized as money they're not stacking the money they're not even stacking the currency why would they stack the money but they're not financially preparing themselves for the future and that's exactly what i see silver and gold as i i see it as financial preparation i do consider the dollar bill to be a small percentage of financial preparation as well i mean you got to stack a little bit of currency alongside your money you don't want to insult the money but you want to stack a little bit of this because, like I said, short-term solution to a short-term problem. That's just my opinion. That's just from my perspective. I'm curious. What are your thoughts? Head on down to the comments and let me know. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Let me know why. If you liked the video, if you absolutely hated the video, let me know. Please, I'll take all the comments that I can get. If you guys enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. If you guys like me, make sure to subscribe. New videos every single day, 365 days a year. Also subscribe to my second channel, which is my backup channel for exclusive weekly content. Brand new video over there, go check it out. The link will be in the description. Trying really hard to hit 2,000 subscribers, just hit 1,000 and I appreciate that. And if you wanna help support the channel in the biggest possible way, please consider getting yourself some DYDSS merchandise. Of course, we have some precious metal themed t-shirts and hoodies, which are up for grabs, along with a ton of other products, t-shirts, hoodies, even stickers, many of which are raising funds and awareness for different charity organizations. And of course, the brand new Kraken Stackin' t-shirt, hoodie, sticker, and coffee mug, inspired by the beautiful two ounce silver Kraken coin. This is actually helping us raise a little bit of money for ocean cleanup charity organizations at no additional cost to you. It comes out of my pocket, not yours. Any and all merchandise can be found by clicking the first link in the description section down below. Thank you in advance. It's more than appreciated. Once again, please head on down to the comments and let me know. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me on everything that I shared about currency? Do you think these glorified IOU notes are not depreciating in value? Or do you have firsthand experience? Have you seen that a $20 bill gets you significantly less nowadays than it did back in the day. Do you agree with me on my stance on precious metals, the silver and the gold, a long-term solution to an inevitable long-term problem? Inflation, mass printing, the dollar bill getting weaker and weaker and weaker. And like I said, what typically happens when currency, when fiat gets weaker, real, true, honest money becomes stronger. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. And remember, don't you dare stop smiling. Peace. When you're smiling, when you're smiling.